everyone, it's Natalie. Welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I am sharing with you my six to nine month baby must-haves. If you missed the other videos in this series, I will leave a playlist linked in the description box so you can check out my newborn must-haves, my uh, three to six month must-haves, and um, if you have seen those other videos, you probably know that I am someone who likes to keep it really practical. I'm really just trying to get the most bang for my buck. I'm trying to purchase things that will give me a lot of use and will last me a long time. So that's my mindset going into purchasing things for my baby. and chances are if you clicked on this video you kind of feel the same way so we all have different likes and dislikes but this is just my opinion and what has really worked for me for my babies in the six to nine month stage if you enjoyed this video while you're watching it or if you find it at all helpful then definitely let me know by giving it a thumbs up that helps my channel out a lot and if you are new here then welcome I make lifestyle and mommy videos every Wednesday and Saturday and I would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss when I post a new video. So one of the biggest developments during the six to nine month stage for babies is their ability to eat. And usually it's during that time that solid foods are introduced. If you follow the American Academy of Pediatric Guidelines for breastfeeding and um, introducing solid foods, they don't suggest you do it until the six month mark, which is where I started feeding Haley solid food. Um, the boys were a little earlier than that. Um, but for this time, I needed to be convenient, I need it to be easy to clean up. Uh, feeding a baby is actually one of my least favorite tasks as a mom. You might be surprised to hear that. Sometimes I would rather change a dirty diaper than feed a baby. It just seems like one of the most mundane tasks. And so I really try to set up the environment to be as easy to navigate and as easy to clean up as possible, especially now that I'm doing baby led weaning style food with my daughter. A high chair is a really important purchase and it's something that I have agonized over because it's got to work for me. And um, when my boys were little babies, I purchased the Fisher Price Space Saver high chairs. They can be sat on the floor, they can be strapped to a chair. They're really easy to clean. The cover, um, like the fabric cover on them, comes off and they can be thrown into the washing machine. The tray comes completely off and it can be thrown into the dishwasher. Very easy to wipe down the whole thing and they're really portable. We've taken them over to grandma's house and they've just been really all around convenient. Convenient. Then when my boys got a little bit older, I wanted to get a more permanent looking high chair, something that looked a little bit more like furniture. And so I got them the Eddie Bauer high chairs that were like the wooden ones. And while these high chairs look really good, they can be kind of inconvenient. They're definitely more difficult to clean and they are not portable at all. And so you kind of sacrifice a little bit of convenience for aesthetics. But then when it came to my daughter, Haley, she actually just hated sitting in one of these Eddie Bauer high chairs. And it was the high chair that we first had her in when she started eating solid food. And she would be so fussy and uncomfortable. She would kick and squirm in it. And it was obvious that she was uncomfortable. So I went on the lookout for a new high chair and I ended up right back where I started with the boys, and that was with the Fisher Price Space Saver High Chairs. They're not only convenient, easy to clean, portable, but they're also comfortable. And my picky baby, who didn't like the wooden high chair, really enjoys the Fisher Price one. So I wouldn't necessarily say that the Eddie Bauer high chair was a regret, but if I had to pick one high chair, that would serve my baby long term, it would definitely be the Fisher Price Space Saver High Chairs, and I would totally forego the aesthetics of a wooden Eddie Bauer high chair. So I introduced solid foods and all of a sudden I was noticing that my babies were starting to get constipated. And so um, something that really can help a baby other than drinking water and getting fluids in their, their system that way is um, introducing some probiotics to their system. After speaking with our pediatrician and getting the green light, I started Haley on these probiotic drops. This is from the Mommy's Bliss brand. Um, I just followed the directions for her age and it it really helped a lot after she started taking this for a few days stuff started to get loosened up and I could tell that she wasn't in as much discomfort when she was trying to go poo-poo. You can drop it straight into the baby's mouth 
and um, the directions even say that you can drop some on your breast and then have the baby get it into their mouth that way when they go to latch on to nurse. I haven't had to do that because she has no problem taking it from the dropper, um, but these definitely have made a difference and I totally recommend them. I noticed this with all three of my kids when they were no longer exclusively breastfed, when new foods were introduced into their diet, they started to get diaper rashes and irritation down on the diaper area and the only diaper rash cream that really has ever worked for our kids is the Bedros butt paste. It's such a funny name and I remember seeing this on the shelves before I had kids and just cracking up at it, but it really does work. It has all natural ingredients, no artificial scents or dyes, and it has aloe in it. This kind at least does. And seriously, I put this on them they go to sleep at night and the next morning their diaper rash is pretty much all cleared up. Okay, so playtime. During the six to nine month stage, playtime can get really fun because they are discovering new things every day. Um, usually they can crawl a little bit by now. Some babies are even starting to stand up on their own. It, every baby is a little bit different as far as their development. But by this time, my kids were crawling and they love to scoot around. They love to um, have like playtime with mommy and daddy really interact with us and they wanted to start pulling themselves up to stand and start really exploring strengthening their lower body and really strengthening their balance and their legs. Now one purchase regret of mine is a uh, bouncer for a baby. With this baby I have done a little bit more research about bouncers or walkers and their effects on babies and their development and then their hip health especially and it has been enough to convince me that it's not the best choice for kids. I will leave some of my research linked down below if you guys want to check it out for yourself. I think the draw to bouncers is that there's lots of toys right there that can't get scattered about. It's also a great way to contain a baby if you need to set them somewhere and not have them, you know, get into stuff or whatever. Um, but my babies don't really enjoy bouncers all that much, especially Haley. The boys seem to for a little bit, but they quickly moved out of that stage and Haley hated it from the word go. She did not enjoy playing in a bouncer in the least. She felt constricted and confined and uncomfortable. She didn't even pay attention to the toys around her because she was just so upset all the time when she was in this bouncer. Especially if you purchase one new, they can be really expensive and in my experience they are definitely not worth the money. Even if your baby does enjoy it, it's usually not for a very long time. Um, and so I think a great alternative, something that they can stand and strengthen their legs, um, and something that actually provides other sorts of playtime is an activity cube. I love this one. Um, this is the Zany Zoo activity cube. We bought this one for my boys, and they were a little bit too old when we first got it, but we knew we wanted to have more kids, and so we kept this one saved, and we brought it out right around the time that Haley turned six months old, and she just loves this toy. So she can play with it while she's sitting on her bottom, she can play with it while she's laying down and play with the little things on the sides, and there's lots of little things to spin and look at, colors and shapes, lots of tactile things to just grab and pull at, but also there's a really fun little thing on the top with all sorts of different animals and little beads and tracks and different things that she really wants to see and it encourages her to pull herself up to stand and she strengthens her legs and her balance by doing that. Now the benefit of having your baby contained for a while by having a bouncer um, is definitely not something that the Zany Zoo provides. But we have found that having a playpen in a corner of our house can really be helpful when we need to put the baby somewhere and go attend to something. And I have to do that a lot because I am caring for three-year-old twin boys and their potty bathroom needs. My favorite playpen is the Juvie Room 2. This thing is very roomy. I actually mentioned it in my latest uh, monthly favorites video. We have really enjoyed this and so has Haley. This is a very large roomy space that she can explore. It holds all of her toys without feeling really crowded and it contains her, it keeps her safe. And sometimes I need her to play in there while her brothers are doing more of a rambunctious activity like you know three-year-old twin boys would do and um, she's at risk for getting trampled that's just the realness of the situation and I definitely want to make sure that she's always playing in a safe spot so having a nice little playpen 
on the side really helps with that and she enjoys it. She can look through the big panel, the mesh window, and she feels like she's right a part of what we're doing in the house. Um, the floor is really nice and uh, comfortable, not too cushy, not too stiff, and she really does enjoy playing in there. Well, that is everything on my list of six to nine month baby must-haves, as well as a couple of little purchase regrets in there. I do hope that this video was informative and helpful to you if you are looking to start getting things for your six to nine month old baby. If you are not yet to this stage with your baby, don't forget to save this video into a playlist so you can refer back to it later because babies grow faster than you think and you will be to the six to nine month stage in the blink of an eye. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what your favorite baby item is right now. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the six to nine month age range, um, but if you have a favorite baby item, I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll catch you later.